Well, this week we'll begin with a multi-biomarker approach for the diagnosis of heart failure in outpatients. This is a study in circulation that looked at several different uh, biomarkers in stable outpatients in the Framingham cohort and found that, not that surprisingly, BNP was a significant predictor of heart failure and added to the overall risk prediction of heart failure. The urinary um, albumin to creatinine ratio was also another risk factor of developing uh, heart failure. And so as uh, biomarkers move into various fields, including in the outpatient setting, we see now that the multi-marker approach can be helpful. At this week's number two spot, we have the uh, results of the thin uh, RS study, or the, uh, the home INR uh, study, where it looked at um, testing with the home device weekly as compared with the standard routine of INR testing at a clinic monthly. Overall, they found a slightly better um, TTR, as it's known, or time in the therapeutic range with the home testing weekly, uh, but that did not translate into better prevention against stroke, uh, death, or uh, avoiding major bleeding. Uh, there was a slightly lower, numerically lower rate, but this was not statistically significant. Interestingly, no difference whatsoever in the risk of bleeding, um, and if anything, slightly higher minor bleeding with the home testing uh, approach. And so it certainly worked, uh, and patients had a higher satisfaction with their anticoagulation when they were testing at home, uh, maybe less travel, uh, but, um, but it didn't improve outcomes overall. So a reasonable approach, but not a better one. And then finally, in the number one spot this week, we've had a lot on CPR, and now the guidelines have been updated. The American Heart Association uh, puts out the cardiopulmonary resuscitation and emergency cardiac care guidelines and has just updated uh, the 2005 guidelines, now in 2010, and put in some pretty major changes in the CPR uh, approach. For starters, instead of the ABCs, uh, they say to begin with compressions, and so the compressions first uh, is the key approach uh, so that the ABCs turn into CAB, um, so that one approaches immediately doing 30 CPR compressions. They say that they should be about two inches in depth at least, as opposed to one and a half inches that they used to say, a little bit smaller, obviously, for uh, children and infants. Um, but other things that they abandoned the look, listen, and feel as the initial assessment, and again, emphasize the importance of very early compressions. Now, for standard CPR, it's a 30 compressions to two rescue breaths uh, approach, but they do note that for bystander CPR, that uh, compression-only CPR is perfectly uh, valid and recommended, uh, so that if there's any issue about giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, that can be omitted in favor of simply doing compressions. Uh, and so a lot of uh, other changes, uh, you know, more minor changes, but um, I think recognition that the field of CPR actually is evolving, and hopefully one can see better outcomes with the early compressions uh, that seem to be a key to early survival. So I'm Chris Cannon with uh, this week's Cardiology Countdown.